Okay, I'm, I'm ready. And uh, the program is much simpler. Today, not so much talk, 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 talk. I will review with you a couple of announcements. I will re-examine with you some of the details concerning the assignments. And of course, you can ask more questions. Then I would like to engage in a class activity or discussion of sorts, which is preliminary to one of the assignments or both in a more philosophical sense. And then it's a Thursday, so every Thursday we watch some scenes from a movie. And today's movie is the classic Herbie the Love Bug from 1968. The first in a small franchise of four movies, including Herbie Rides Again, which came much later in, in the 1970s, Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, and Herbie Goes Bananas. As I said, we shall not mention the remake from 2005 or 6 with the local thespian Lindsay Lohan, because it wasn't such a masterpiece. <laughs> uh, if I forget, at some point, do remind me about the attendance sheet so that I can circulate it during the lecture. And once the lecture is over, you can simply leave instead of lining up to sign it, okay? I think this should be it. So, as promised, I posted a paragraph about giving some extra credit in case you are interested in attending one of the relevant events posted in the announcement page. Of course, there might be some other campus events, but whenever there is something significant around us, connected in a significant way with the topic of the class, if you're there because you live in the area, if you were already planning to go there because you have some interest or a friend with an interest in automobile related events, why not write a short report, put it in your Google Docs file. By the way, all of the Google Docs file have been created and shared with you with the exception of a couple, a couple of students who joined between yesterday afternoon and this morning, and I still have to create those two, but otherwise you should all have that Google Docs file at your disposal. Make sure that you verify that you can actually edit the file, that the permission uh, were properly set, and remember that those files are private. They can only be seen and edited by each individual student and by me, keep in mind that when it comes to assignments, if you want, let's say, to ask me to review a draft before the deadline, rather than using email, you should use the comments feature in Google Docs. That's why we're using this system. You can place next to your draft a comment saying, this is done, but maybe it could be improved upon. Let me know if this is good enough or what is that you want and I will receive a notification once you post such comment. And whenever I have time, I'll, I'll go and, and respond or leave suggestions attached to a specific passage, such as rewrite this or revise this or expand this uh, passage, etc. So, as I said, for example, with reference to the first relevant event that was posted that is going on this Saturday and Sunday at the Nassau Coliseum, the Electrify Expo. First time uh, that uh, this fair comes to uh, Long Island um, and uh, they, they stopped at, at various places in throughout the United States for four or five other uh, places. So frankly, I don't know what to expect, whether it'll be 
at all interesting, barring any emergencies, I'm planning to, uh, to go and, and see. So as I said, it could be this event, more easily it could be one of the events in September that will be announced next week, which is a Concours d'Elegance organized by the Center for Italian Studies. And it's a big gathering of collectors of Italian vintage, vintage Italian cars and also current owners of some exotic Italian cars. And it takes place right on campus on a Sunday morning uh, between the, 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 comp, the gym complex and what is old, old chemistry, uh, uh, I believe. So especially if you dorm on campus, if you're not going away for the weekend, you could perhaps show up if it is a, a nice day. How would, and, and of course I, I specify that a, a, a report for an event such as this would be worth one point of extra credit added to the final grade, okay? The way the report works, you would have to include some pictures, including possibly a selfie showing that you were actually there, unless for an event such as the uh, Concours d'Elegance on campus, you see me talking to someone or taking pictures and you just show up and say, hi professor, I'm here, and, and uh, perhaps remind me of, of your name if I haven't learned it yet. Uh, and, and then you write a short report, something like, 200 words, 300 words, as long as it is a smart report, meaning not generic, not, I saw a Lamborghini and it was so fine and I love the color, plum, rather it, it should be, I, I was interested in this Maserati from 1952 and I struck a conversation with the owner and the owner had this to say about how it feels to drive a car from this era, or, or what this car represented for the history of the automotive technology, right? And then you, you attach a short summary. Not mean that you should bother these people and keep them occupied for an hour. I'm talking about a question or two, right? So anything that is non-generic would be uh, accepted for these kinds of events. Again, my effort is to connect what we're doing in this room to whatever is happening outside. And for this kind of topic, there is a lot happening. Of course, as I said, some events are easier to attend. Others can be far away or it could be more expensive. I don't know yet what the ticket price, oh yes, it says $20, okay. Uh, probably they don't have any students uh, discount. Uh, the event on campus would be free, uh, clearly, etc. Okay? Or if you know, if you learn about a similar event that takes place where you live, in your village, in your neighborhood, it could be even as simple as a cars and coffee. Cars and coffees have, have really exploded under COVID because the official public event were not organized anymore. But the people with vintage cars still wanted to go out, still wanted to interface with other aficionados, okay? So you have a lot, and in fact, if you want, if you want to be alerted, there is a website, I don't remember right now, the name of the website, but there is a website to which you can subscribe or check on, and it will tell you about all kinds of local events through Long Island or even uh, the lower part of the upstate area, depending again, or on where you live, okay? Enough about this. Uh, the other announcement is about YouTube video of the first class. Okay, so my iPad didn't crash and, and was broken. It, it, it worked perfectly, the, the, the case saved it. And you have at your disposal an HD video, a, a 1080p resolution. Um, audio is perfectly fine uh, with chapters so you can jump to a specific section let's say later on during the exam before you when you prepare for the exam because the topic was on the shortlist for the exam and you have notes but perhaps you want to review what was said right and you you have it there of course if you miss a class you, you have this and you should view the video 
as soon as possible, right? Don't postpone it. Don't think I'll wait until the end of the semester or the exam because you, you, you might find yourself without the time uh, to do so, okay? And since this will be done for every class, this will be the first and last announcement. I'm not going to announce in the announcement page every time I post a video. You know that will be found there under the week one or week two, week three page that is accessible linked from the lectures and readings main page, okay? Simple enough. For every uh, video in the description, you also find links to the presentations that were used so that if you review this because you missed the class or you review it for the exam, you can also, from the video, click on the presentation and have the presentation next to you and the video or, or see them at different times. We didn't spend much time on the syllabus and now would be one good time to ask questions, but then of course you can come to my office, to my virtual office, you can send me an email for clarifications. There are a couple of things I want to comment on to expand of what you find already here. Okay, so the first thing would be to call your attention on this brutal attendance policy and explain why, because I've never had such a thing. In fact, I didn't really have an attendance policy other than some language encouraging students not to miss classes. But what happened in my classes last semester in the spring, and, and in many of my colleagues' classes, as far as I know, is that while we were transitioning out of COVID, students were either hesitant to come back or still shell-shocked by the experience of the pandemics. And I experienced a number of absentees that I had never seen at Stony Brook in almost 30 years. Not only that, but what was strange to me was that I could have a student missing five classes in a row, six, eight, 10, and not sending me an email, not responding me to an email from me that was more concerned than inquisitorial, was not, oh, you scoundrel, but rather, what's happening? Are there, have the circumstances in your life changed, right? Um, that affected your attendance. And then the same students would at some point show up, not say anything, complete the assignments, etc. And in one egregious case, a student had missed 50% of the classes before the end of the semester. And when I said, you should withdraw from the class, he said, well, you cannot fail me for this because your syllabus doesn't say that if I miss so many classes, I'll be failed. But clearly, that's no way to attend a class. Again, that's not you. You are, are fair people. And uh, I hope, number one, you come to class. Number two, if anything prevents you from coming to class, whether it be some hardcore reason, I, I got sick, or, or some personal crisis, that you keep the communication channel open, right? And if you don't, if, if you don't show up, don't email me, don't respond to my emails, then this mean policy will take effect, okay? As, as simple as that. I wanted to correct the impression because I'm not one of those mean, wipe the finger in your face kind of faculty. Uh, the other thing, oh yes, it's about the written assignments. Written assignments are included under attendance and participation because there is some flexibility. What I expect from you, so each assignment will have a variable number of points between two and four. And what I expect you is a minimum of 15 points out of those 25 to be done with those assignments, okay? Which uh, can be achieved usually with five assignments. But those assignments can be of different nature. You could end up with 17 or 18 points instead of 25. That's fine in general. If, if you 
accumulate more points with the assignments, you'll be rewarded, right? Unless the other part, those five to 10 points for participation attendance, in, in the other section, you are very actively engaged in the class and, and making comments, asking questions all the time or coming to talk to me about the topics after the class or in my office, okay? Uh, what you've seen already will be repeated and I'm about to make it clear in the list of lectures and readings and assignments. That is to say, there will be alternate assignments that can be done that may satisfy your interests better than the regular assignment. Again, they'll be labeled alternate assignment, which doesn't mean you have to do all of the assignments that are listed, right? Just that you have different options. And as I said, depending on the points that you accumulate, you can skip one because you know you'll have enough points at some point. And what I'll do is include those alternate assignments in the lectures and readings page and specify next to it the points so you can plan ahead if you want, okay? One example of that would be here in one of the presentations for the general introduction. This one is called Inspiration and Core Concept Definitions. It's not the one with the images that I used on Tuesday. That's another one. But while I was reviewing and expanding to add clarity to this presentation, I thought it would be nice to add a, one of those possible assignments, right? Which is not required. It's up to you to choose how to get to a minimum of 50 points, okay? As I said before, if this is something that you think you can do well, why not? And at some point before the end of the semester, all you will have to do is focus on the readings, work on the final project, and you won't have any of the of these pesky assignments uh, slowing you down. So in here, I provided a working definition of what a technology is, right? Since we're talking about the automotive technology, what is a definition for technology that works for this class and our, our readings? And I provided plenty of examples of a traditional technology and a modern technology which is oftentimes an individual technology or a personal technology, right? Which doesn't mean simply that it's being used by an individual. Even a hammer is an individual technology, right? Because only one person holds it. But it's not personal, right? There is no personal attachment. It could be your favorite hammer as a carpenter, but it's not like your phone. It's not like what might be your car. Or maybe your car uh, is, is not a personal uh, side of you. But I specified what are the criteria to identify this kind of modern technology that I call individual or personal, as opposed, for example, to the train, the steamship, which were collective technologies, right? Requiring an infrastructure used by multiple people at the same time. By a plurality of people, right? And you will see these definitions with the examples are clear enough, and you find a matrix that I used applied to fashion, because fashion can be considered a technology under this definition, applied again to smartphones, and of course you can recognize this both, actually, you can recognize uh, very easily and apply very easily to your personal life. And then I asked, what about the automobile? And I didn't want to repeat this in a mechanical way because this is what we'll do throughout the semester. But if you think there are two things you can do, one, simply after you've read this to test your learning, you can try and, and put down for your personal use some notes and see, have I learned these concepts? Would I be able to do this? Or you can 
put what you wrote on your Google Docs file and it can be counted as two points, okay? And, and of course, you can keep track of the points, you can ask me how many points do I have already and it'll be in my spreadsheet, okay? So this is an example of a number, a small number of alternate assignments. And again, the keyword is alternate, which means not required, but if you're interested, as long as at some point you have at least 50 points, then you can be done with the assignments. And let's review the assignments together and then I'll open the floor for questions. So assignments will be usually due the Wednesday of the next week. You can do them earlier if you want to. And you find a reading. I showed this the other time. And since it is kind of a technical article from a professor who's a specialist in, in the field of uh, the automobile and society, uh, I place some focus points so you know what to look for in the article. And there are only four focus points. Then you have the first option, the default option for the first written assignment. And I've included the length, the contents, with plenty of suggestions to help you understand what you need to do, including the style. This should not be a mini paper with works cited or with a formal introduction where you, you state your thesis necessarily. You, you can do that, but you don't have to if it is not your style, right? And, and the style should be personal, but keep in mind you're a student. So it should be the, the, the good balance between, the optimal balance between personal and academic in a word that would be intellectual, right? Including suggestions such as reread the introduction. In fact, besides the general introduction, the other file too, uh, the one I showed with the core concepts could be a good way to do it so that your, your assignment has some substance. The alternative assignment is based on a short film, is essentially a TV film, part of a series. The series itself is based on a rubric in the New York Times that was called Modern Love, where readers would write or be interviewed about their peculiar relationship history of, of romance. And a very beautiful piece was this one entitled Driving the Top um, on a Serpentine Road with the Top Down. And uh, it, was, it became the first episode of the second season of this series, which is available on Prime for free if you, if you are a Prime member. I watched it again last night with my wife, and I was moved, even though I had seen it before. It's a nice little film, beautiful acting, beautiful uh, scenes, the, the scenery itself, and it's a beautiful way to present the magic of the car, the spiritual, uh, almost supernatural connection that is established between this woman doctor interpreted by Mini Driver and a British car in the original article from the New York Times, it was an Italian Alfa Romeo. In here, it's a tri Triumph Stag. And this is the car that her fiance, then first husband, bought as the car uh, used to take home their child. And then the husband died. She remarried, but she kept the car and the car became a part of herself, not just a relic from her past, but really a vessel that would allow her to express her emotional world without any censorship, without any judgment from other people. Nicely shot, uh, and so if you're into these kinds of things, 
you can write a short film analysis with a focus on the theme, what is the place of the card in this film. Okay, just that. I've included the link to this episode on Prime, the link to the article on the New York Times, so you can read both, have a better sense of what converted from the text of the article, from that narrative, into the, um, the film, okay? And, as I said, I'm not going to continue. This is where we stopped on Tuesday before we could talk about the road movie genre, which is a, cl which is a classic genre of Hollywood, in fact, it is classified as a global genre. It's one of seven or eight global genres, that is to say, genres that exist in every uh, culture, in every uh, uh, cinema, uh, in different areas of the world. And not only you see constant um, film produced uh, belonging to this genre, but often you see them receiving accolades so this uh, Green Book received three Oscars. Uh, the, the first true car movie by Frank Capra, 1935, It Happened One Night, was the first movie to win the five most important Oscars. Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Movie, Best Screenplay, uh, Best, cinema, best, best uh, Cinematographic Direction, Best Director. This is a reference to the driver's film. Of course, I added The Fast and the Furious because it, it made so much money, right? But if you read the caption, and the captions are your reading for, for this week, you'll find what I think about it, that it's not really about the car. The car is not the central focus. The car is just the macho accessory of a macho character or a cool female, right? With the exception of two, I save two. The first one and the third one. Tokyo Drift is really nice. The first one is, is more than acceptable and it's mostly about friendship, right? So it's not mostly about the car. The movies about the cars are, are something else, right? Etc. right? There are songs about this, there are comics, this is a French comics series that started in 1959, was translated in dozens of languages, is still being sold. Uh, the, the first series stopped up 70 volumes after the author died. It was relaunched, not so successfully in 2018, but the old books are still being sold in electronic version, in uh, paper version, and it's all about a family, a French family, whose members are producing cars and racing cars, the Vaillant, uh, okay? There, there are also a couple of films made on this. But they're nice films, but they were not particularly successful. Although you may know the art of Racing in the Rain as a film and as a novel, etc. So, just go through this. These presentations are part of your readings and they're listed on top of the readings you will find, review the presentations posted this week, right? So even though I, I didn't insist on these captions and the related idea, go through them yourselves. And same with the other presentation that I showed before, inspiration and core concepts. In fact, this is, the, the, the first one is really a general philosophical introduction. This includes the real definition and the guidelines. If you understand, if you study now this, then your assignments will be less generic, more poignant, more relevant. Because practically you can apply most of the ideas and definitions and the language from this presentation to uh, almost any of the assignments. The first one is, is a bit more personal and generic, but the other ones from, from this point on 
including mini drivers filmed on a serpentine road will benefit from your knowledge of these definitions, these ideas, the, this terminology. Then, if there is something that is not clear, you come to me or, you know, on top of the lectures and readings page, there is a Q&A link. That is another Google Docs file open only and can be edited only by students in this class. And you post your questions there so that I can respond to you and perhaps help someone else. Okay. Um, well, this is, this is it. In fact, I've used a lot of time, but um, I'll, I'll proceed as quickly as I can to the next thing. And it, it would be this kind of discussion. So instead of doing it on a piece of paper, there isn't enough time for you to write it down and then share uh, with uh, me. Mm. We'll, we'll just do it as a discussion, okay? So, I'll give you a little time to think about it, but the idea would be to hear you talk about these things. And of course, when you raise your hand and say something, if you can please say your first name so that I can learn and associate your faces with, with names. So, you don't have to talk about all these things could be any one of those things. The first car that you remember, which could be your grandfather's car, right? Or that left a strong impression on you. It could be a car from a film, right? The VGA cable is shifting. I don't know why they have a VGA cable in this, a dinosaur-like VGA cable in, in this room, right? Welcome to Stony Brook. <laughs> yes, flagship university of the SUNY system. Thank you. Yes, I can see it. You can see it right here. Well, at least we have matching chairs, right? Up to 10 years ago, I would go into a class and find seven kinds of chairs represented there, and some had been stained by the niece of, of Genghis Khan. Right? Uh, you, you had some mysterious stains on those chairs that were not really enticing. Mm, uh, could be the first car you owned or that was loaned to you because it was the first. Uh, and, and if, and this is becoming more common, the car means very little in your life, let's hear from you, especially from you, because as you will see from the first reading the article, car ownership is going down in the younger generation. The number, the percentage of younger people without a license, especially in urban area, is growing. So the signs are there that the technology has peaked. The technology peaked around 1980, the first time, 2015, the second time, right? even in terms of production, we, we got to 100 million cars around 2016, 17, but now we're down to 80 million cars being produced worldwide, right? A big decrease. And, and you know, the untold secret, unspoken secret of the industry is how many parking lots are filled with new cars that will never be sold. Not even at cost, not even to realize some money. They're just sitting there at some point they will be destroyed. Uh, and, uh, and, and that would be it. Of course, if, you can, if you're more creative and you think of something else to say, that would be uh, uh, great, okay? And we have about 15 minutes for this to leave enough time for the film. So I know I won't be able to hear from uh, every one of you, but there will be other discussions, or if you want, you can add your contribution to your Google Docs file, okay? Okay, so I will briefly introduce the film, and then I hope to be able to manage the DVD player in under five minutes, and we can start watching that. Um, if I accidentally mentioned her being fully loaded in my uh, response, is that going to have results taken down? <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, you, you'll have immunity. 
Okay, cool. Because, like, that was the one I watched when I was a kid. I wasn't Do you, you like it? At the time, I was like... You know, okay you know what? I watched Herbie at the, in the theaters as, as a kid of, of six or seven. I don't remember when it came out in Italy. Usually, it might take one or two years. And to me, it was the movie, <laughs> yeah. right? So my expectations were influenced by the fact that I, I watched that one movie. When my son was born, we had all the VHS tapes of the four movies and uh, we would watch it together. So that's why probably I, I, I see it with, with a different filter. Now, um, the, the, the film. So it's a Walt Disney film. It's a very traditional film. The director had been working in Hollywood for 30 years at this point. So uh, even, even the style is very traditional based on acting a lot of uh, uh, frames with the face of the actor. The theme of the movie is the connection, exactly the connection between the car and humans. A specific car, which is this Volkswagen Beetle, they considered, took into consideration other cars for the movie, then they decided for this particular uh, car, uh, which of course, of course was very common even in the United States and not very expensive, so owned by plenty of people. It's the story of Jim Douglas, who is a, a B-series kind of race driver whose career is, is plunking, is, is going down the, the drain. And it doesn't have sponsors, a big team, loads of cash. And he has a meet cute at the beginning of the film. The meet cute is a technique used, widely used by Hollywood to establish the relationship between a man and a woman. In, the, in his case, is a double meet cute between him and Carol, the, the, the woman who will become his companion, and this particular car, this Volkswagen Beetle. And there is a strong connection with both. He will find out that this car is not as tame as it looks, that it can go very fast, but it goes very fast by itself. Something Jim doesn't want to recognize or acknowledge because he has to believe that finally, finally his driving skills are paying up and he's winning races at Riverside. You can see the scene in California at that point. Riverside was the track where a lot of gentlemen drivers or actors went to drive, right? You know that James Dean died on his way to a track, on his race car at Porsche 550, I believe. Uh, Steve McQueen later on would, would race, but a lot of those actors had enough cash to buy uh, Ferraris, Maseratis, etc., and have fun uh, there. So, inevitably, with the help of his friend, roommate, and mechanic, Tennessee, Jim has to come to face the truth that the car is alive, that the car is responsible for those victories. However, there is trouble in paradise, of course, and both Jim and Carol and Jim and the car split. And they will reunite at the end after one last victory in an endurance race. The digital effects are not existent. The special effects are very cheeky, okay? Some of the same frames are even reproposed throughout the movie. When it comes to the races, they're reusing the same material. They probably shot 10 minutes of races and then they use it multiple times. This was normal, not only but you know that movies from the 1960s and 70s would sometimes borrow frames from other movies when it came to showing the city of Istanbul or showing the city of London, right? Or the city of Rome. They wouldn't send a, a troop, a crew there to shoot new films if the company said, oh, reuse this from this movie. And, and, and they did. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see how it goes.